Alrighty guys, so I have a little bit of a story to tell for this week's Pathfinder playtest preview content. One of the most iconic creatures of Dungeons and Dragons is getting a lore change, and that lore change is reflected hard in their stat blocks in combat, changing the meta just entirely. Do you like blaster casters? Well, in addition to doing way more damage than you used to, in the Pathfinder playtest, Demons have elemental vulnerabilities now. Yeah, and that's what we're talking about today. If you guys like what you see, remember, jam that like and subscribe button. And today, this episode of your Pathfinder playtest preview content, the quadruple P's, if you will, brought to you in part by DM Glorindoodle. Thanks so much for your help, man. Now, I've got a lot to tell you, but first, story time. So I realized this was a thing running through Doomsday Dawn. At present, my Doomsday Dawn group is at Heroes of Undarin. I think probably the Lich will be what kills the party, but I kind of assumed it would be the demons because one of the five party members came in with an alchemist, the other a wizard. So of course, naturally, I see this and I think to myself, okay, demons resist most elements. Demons are usually immune to an element or two. We're basically relying on the monk and the druid to carry the martial greatness through the party and help maybe survive. No, not the case. I'll be the first to admit, would I have a pre-published thing and there's monsters in it? Or I decide on a monster for flavor and be like, yeah, that's real good. Oftentimes I won't look at its stat block until we go down to combat, at least more than like, that's the CR, that's how much damage it does. Okay, cool. First up, as you know, if you've played through Doomsday Dawn, and, and I guess this is spoilers, you have been warned. There's a group of slaver demons, which I know, being an old Gragnard at this point, is a Kalavakis. In Pathfinder 1st Edition, in addition to spell resistance, which seems to be just gone outright, the Kalavakis was immune to electricity and poison, resisting 10 points of acid, cold, and fire. So, when the alchemist pulls out that old vial of acid, throwing it, in the direction of the Calavacus, I'm like, yeah, okay, sure, that's gonna do no damage or a severely reduced amount. And I go to look at the playtest slaver demon, I guess I should start calling them that instead of Calavacus, and I notice that this creature has no immunities, no resistances, and in addition to taking more damage from good stuff and cold iron stuff, it's weak to acid 10. Yeah, this guy takes 10 extra damage when he's hit with something that does acid damage, and so my alchemist is just melting through people with bombs. That took me completely by surprise, and again, it flips the meta on its head. As a lot of us old grognards know, in first edition, the higher level the game became, the more often things would be just flat, outright immune to a lot of energy damage, or at least resist a lot of it, in such a way that the blaster caster kind of was unplayable. At high level play, you would be a wizard and then switch your spells for control spells, which don't get me wrong, still really good, but it was just impossible, by and large, to play the guy who spammed fireballs until everyone burned to death. Now it's no longer the case, and I think I'm okay with that. As far as the lore goes, demons are creatures of sin, and despite their overt displays of strength and magical might, these sins corrupt them. Each demon has weaknesses tied to the sin or sins most associated with them, and truly that's all of them. There is no demon, just literally not one, though the weakness scales with level, that doesn't have some form of elemental weakness, even the Baylor. The Baylor of first edition, is just flat out immune to electricity, fire, and poison, resisting 10 points of acid and cold with a whopping 31 spell resistance in the playtest. The Baylor, I mean a uh, fire demon, is actually in fact immune to fire because fire demon, but is weak to cold 20. That's amazing, that's so powerful, especially like when we consider Ray of Frost as a scaling cantrip that will now do 20 more damage to this guy to say nothing of Cone of Cold, to say nothing of a Frost Weapon, or any combination therein. Now, obviously, this means a couple of big things for the meta. First off, again, in addition to the fact that we're throwing a lot more and a lot bigger dice around, 
when we cast spells that deal damage. Now at high level play, that's not just shut off, at least not versus demons. Matter of fact, you are rewarded for that playstyle as much as the Paladin is. Literally, it's the same modifier. The Baylor will take 20 extra damage from Cold Iron, just like it will take 20 extra damage from actual cold and good damage. You are literally on the same power level, hit dice aside, as the Paladin is. And I think that's great. I think the ability to play the wizard that blasts, to say nothing of when the kineticist eventually joins us, does quite a bit to the tier list. To be honest with you, I've definitely begun to wonder if the blaster caster isn't more powerful now than the control caster, or at least if they're not on a flat plane. The second thing it obviously says for the meta is when we eventually get the elemental spell, meta magic feat, I imagine to look something along the lines of for one action, add a somatic or verbal thing to a spell and you can choose the energy type dealt by your fireball, it rewards the knowledge checks that much more and it, it almost becomes like a mini game for the sorcerers, wizards, druids, blaster boys. Because again, it's literally in the lore that they're corrupted by a given sin, therefore take more damage from a given element, which in turn ties that element to that sin. Which also ties your cryomancer to one of those elements. Sub-Zero either really, really likes casual interactions with people or gets mad a bunch. That's a thing to think about. Also, another thing it does is, and we can't see this full out yet, but it makes a really stark difference between demons and other things we might fight. Right now it's demons and devils. That's all we have in the best Jerry in terms of like outsiders and stuff. And it speaks a lot of the lore. It speaks a lot really of stat blocks looking like more than just a differently shaped token in Roll20 or Fantasy Grounds or another 10 bucks down the drain to buy a new mini. Let's take something in the same bracket as the Calavacus. The Calavacus is level 10, so too is the Barbed Devil. The Barbed Devil is only weak to good at 10, is immune to fire, and has huge physical resistances. Unless you hit it with a silver weapon, it's just gonna flat not take 10 of it. It's got a Barb, which has the Agile trait, it can attack of opportunity, it has a reactive ability that says when you hit it with a natural weapon or a punchin, you take some damage, a two action attack, and some flavorful stuff, but that's kinda it. It also swings in for 2d8 plus 12. Meanwhile, the Kalavakis, remember, same CR, same level, swings for almost double at 48 plus 7, and its horns have the charge ability, deadly 1d6, and it can grab you, it can disarm you as a reaction when you hit it, but mostly, again, it's double the damage on the attacks. The flavor here seems to be that devils have more defense but less offense, whereas the demons are throwing themselves into combat doing lots of damages but not shoring up their weaknesses. I think that's really cool and that makes me really excited to see like say angels or daemons, oni, other outsiders and how they get flavored in such a way other than just stat blocks that do different things. It's a really good meta and I really like that I'm seeing that in this playtest. Honestly my legacy games may adopt that. Much in the same way that we're adopting things like scaling color spray, much in the same way that I've considered adopting how good shields are. I don't know, we'll see. Anyway, it's a good time to be a Pathfinder. What do you guys think about all this? I guess the big question here really is, is this a nerf? Is this a balance? Is this flavorful? How? What? even is going on. Let me know how you feel about this in the comments below. We'll keep that conversation going and thank you guys so much for watching. We've got more Legacy Pathfinder min-maxing videos by the will of my patrons. So the next episode of your Pathfinder playtest preview content, assuming they don't drop 1.7 when I'm not looking, drops next Tuesday.